Before we get started, I wanna let you know that I didn't stop building furniture. This is gonna be the next project. It's a desk, but it takes a little while because I have to build a desk, make the video, make the plans, or actually I send my detailed drawings to Brian Benham. He makes the plans, and then eventually the project is ready to go up. And it's a, a long format instructional video, and it usually takes four to five weeks to do something like that. So this project is coming hopefully by the end of this month. But for now, we're going to make a frame. And if you think that you might want to start painting, making a frame is kind of a, a fun part of it. If you're a woodworker, you can make the painting and then you can go down into the shop or, or out to the shop. In my case, it's down to the shop and make a frame. So that's what we're going to do right now. First, I want to say that I don't consider myself a great painter but sometimes I make a painting that I like. And a lot of times when I make a painting that I really don't like yet, a frame will make it look that much better and give me the confidence to kind of keep moving on. I'll put it in the frame, look at it, maybe let it sit for a day or two and go back into it. So if you look at this little painting, this is the one that I made last week. You can go to that painting lesson if you want to get started. And it's a seascape. And when you put it in the frame, I think it looks a lot nicer. At least you can see it, and it just kind of defines it a little bit. So we'll take another one. Here's a little jar of honey painted in a little bit of a different style. And again, I'll throw it in the frame. And I think that looks nice. I think that would look good in the room somewhere. A nice, small, casual painting. And here's a painting of one of my chisels. So now I'm going to go ahead and make this same frame, but this time I'm going to make it with butt joints. This is one of the panels that I make all of my small paintings on. The painting surface is five and three quarters by seven inches. It's made out of birch plywood. And I always make this little flange which is a half of an inch deep by a quarter inch. And that's so it will fit inside the frame and float just like that. So to make the frame, first I'm going to make what I'll call a subframe. And that's basically something that the panel will fit into with the flange. These are cutoffs. I'm going to start by ripping these at an inch and seven eighths. After making the rips, I squared up one side of each board and I'm going to cross cut the shorter side first. I'm going to let this be just a little heavier than the panel is wide. So maybe a light 16th. You can kind of just feel it there. I just want the panel to be able to fit in, but also not be too sloppy. I'll make this cut or this mark and cut both parts at the same time. Now I'll take the two shorter pieces, hold them tight against the panel, and then I'll take one of the long pieces, and instead of holding it flush at the side here, I'll let it be just a little bit heavy, like a light 16th, and I'll make my mark over here and cut both long pieces at this mark. If you're making a bunch of frames, you can set up a stop block, but since I'm only making the one frame, I just want to make sure that I'm flush at the ends. You could join these boards together with pocket hole screws like I did with this frame, but I'm just going to use a little wood glue and clamp them up and let them sit for just about an hour.
While the glue is drying, I'll make a piece of two inch molding with this half inch MDF. And when I attach the molding, I'll attach it flush on the ends here, and that'll give me an eighth of an inch reveal all the way around on the inside. And by attaching the molding over the longer pieces like this, that'll reinforce this joint. I've let the glue set up for about an hour. Now I can take this out of the clamps. I'm going to be careful because it is just a simple butt joint. But when I add the molding to the top of the frame, that's going to lock that in. So now I'll go ahead and cut this molding to size. Again, I'm working on the, the short side of the frame and that overlaps this butt joint. So I'll hold the MDF flush at one side. Don't have a pencil, here's one. And trace a line. Making sure I'm flush. Again, I'm going to cut both pieces at the same time, making sure I'm flush at the ends, and make the cut. I'll attach the molding with wood glue and one inch nails in the nail gun. And when I attach the molding, I want to keep it flush on the outside of the frame. And that's going to give me that eighth of an inch overhang on the inside. Now I'll cut this piece of molding to fit. Just a quick tip, I want a nice snug fit with this cut and I've got a sacrificial fence set up on my miter saw so I know that this is where the blade is cutting. So I can line my pencil mark right up with the cut in the fence and maybe I'll back it off a little bit and keep it heavy for the first cut. And if it turns out that this is heavy, I can move the molding in just a little bit and make another cut. And it turns out that that cut was a little heavy, so I'll bring this back to the saw and take a little bit more off. Okay, so that's a pretty simple way to make a frame, and it's a lot of fun. I really like making frames because it's, it's a lot of fun putting the paintings into the frame. I've been making frames forever, not just for myself, but for other artists and galleries and collectors, and it's always fun putting a painting in a frame. It just kind of sets it off a little bit. This frame will now be our next be filled. I'll use joint compound for the filler. I'll give it two coats of Fresh Start, which is a, a Benjamin Moore uh, latex acrylic primer. It's heavy bodied, so it kind of hides a lot. And if you've ever worked with MDF, you know that MDF just sucks in that first coat, kind of raises the grain. You'll get a very rough feel. So after the first, first coat goes on, sand it give it another coat. And then the last coat, this one's actually finished here. So this has got two coats of the primer. And the last coat is Benjamin Moore Command with a satin finish. And uh, if you've been watching the channel, you know that I've been using Command a lot. It just dries very quickly. It's very easy to use. And I think it's a, a nice, durable paint. I've got nothing to do with Benjamin Moore. Unfortunately, I'd love to work with them. But uh, 
That's what my hardware store carries, and I've been using Benjamin Moore products for a very long time. I will be posting another painting lesson tomorrow morning. So every Sunday morning, right around 9 o'clock, I plan to put a, a painting video up, and I've got 10 already shot. So I'll continue to do this, and uh, the goal is at least 50 a year. We'll see if I can keep up with that. And then a piece of furniture every four to eight, uh, four to six, four to eight weeks. And um, these paintings will be available on my site. If you've gone to my site recently, you know that it's down. My site crashed last week, and I'm hoping to have it up by Tuesday. So um, these will be for sale on my site, along with the frame system that I use all the time, in case you're not a woodworker, but you want to paint on something that's maybe a little bit nicer than you're going to get at the art supply store. So as always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.